Welcome back to another episode of Exalted Edge of Creation. Did you guys miss me? Apparently the city's burning down. I guess not. Mm. <laughs> I mean, they were quiet about it, so of course they don't. They didn't, they didn't miss her. Okay. Because they were full of remorse. Mm. Yeah. Um, so Otto and Morez. Yep. Are we transporting via shadow or plants or something? Uh, something like that. So here's the thing. You follow the man... Wind walk. <laughs> back into the city. Um, and he says, I can get us back to the city in time. But you won't exactly remember how we got there. Because he's going to knock you out and rape you along the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're going to have to agree to that before we go. Otherwise, it won't work. Very well. And he, like, touches your hand when you do that, and then touches your hand. Fine. And, like, you see um, Jules, like... <laughs> do it, Jules. Good boy. And he does it, and like, you, you get a strong feeling of regret, like, I do not want to do this. I am not making a deal with this guy. But he agrees because you agree. And then the guy opens that door that he got kicked out of before, the other way from the way it opened before. Yeah. And then... We're coming through the wall gate and the black base of the wall? No. Yeah. You remember heading over the, the mountainside with the uh, Lunars. Mm -hmm. um, apparently you guys ran into him then. He had a conversation with you. The, lunar, the two Lunars went back to the city and then the three of you went off to the northeast. A uh, couple hours, or well, as the sun was coming down, you guys were, uh, you noticed um, saw a familiar shape moving in the sky and were able to signal it with um, some light and then uh, book passage on your ship. At which point you headed south and worked your way around the mountains in that direction. So all of that is in your memory, but you also remember entering the city and everything that just happened in the last episode. Both events are both in your memory, and you remember doing both of them. But anyway, you're approaching the city now from the southeast, in the sky. Um, aboard the Dauntless? Aboard the Dauntless. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> as you were... I was waiting for that! <laughs> um, you are approaching the city from the southeast, uh, you can see that the sun is just setting, like, as you come to, like, it sets, and then you wake back up. Um, and looking, you can kind of see a little bit over the top of the wall, and you can see the ground writhing as it moves towards the wall. Uh, there seems to be some sort of small fire in the southern part of the city. You're actually passing not too far from it, and you can see um, it's being put out. Uh, there's a couple of uh, carts and there seems to be some damage to buildings in the area. Hmm. But it seems like the locals are have it under control right now. Um, it does look like there's been some injuries because you can see people like bodies laying in the street. Looks like more fun was had there last while we were gone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah. Uh this is an interesting ship you have here. Otto, it's, it's very, very nice. It is. So, go ahead and describe the Dauntless. <laughs> now that you've been aboard it for apparently hours. Uh, it's a Firefly class ship. <laughs> you shouldn't have taken a drink at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, she is 100 feet long, uh, 40 feet wide, 30 to 50 feet tall, depending on how you're drawing it. Um, 
she has uh, like whale bones accentuating the pulse. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, like furs covering the outside mm -hmm. and the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, three decks. We are probably birthed in the middle one. Okay. That's and where shuffleboard is. What does she what does she use for propulsion? Um yeah, to float. Fans. Turbine. Yeah. There's fans for fans to move it and then uh, it's a blimp yeah. to keep it aboard. Dirigible. Uh, mm -hmm. Dirigible. They keep it airborne. Hmm. It is nice. uh Partly a um, re-understanding of first age technology, but it is built along different styles than anything first age. This is something that has been not rediscovered so much as um, redesigned or like they, they basically reinvented the wheel to make this. Mm. You know, they used some information from first age knowledge, but it wasn't first age knowledge of how to build an airship. It was just, oh, hey, this is how the way things work. Oh, I bet I could build an airship with that. Hmm. Uh, so it is very new technology. The re evolving of the technology. Yeah. Yeah, re, re, um, gotcha. Creating. And they haven't been seen this far south. Is this as far south as uh, any. Islanti League airship has ever gone. Weapons? Done? Um, the men aboard have bows. Yeah. And or spears. Um, yeah, long bows, crossbows, uh, javelins. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you could probably mount a um, some small uh, like ballistas on this. Yeah. It's but it's mainly weight, a trading ship. Yeah. Weight it's weight is already an issue enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, and most of it's given over to the cargo, mm -hmm. which is the whole bottom deck. Mm -hmm. It's the cargo hold. Um, precious cargo is kept on the second deck, um, but that's basically crew quarters and galley, mm -hmm. and then the captain's quarters is on the poop deck. Mm -hmm. Okay. And below the cap, below the poop deck, the second and third deck is the, the engine, bays. Okay. All right. Um, so you guys are approaching the city. Uh, it's surprisingly quiet, honestly, because again, it is mostly dirigible. Um, nearby, you can hear it obviously, but from a distance, it doesn't make a lot of noise. Uh, as you are approaching the wall, um, you can see uh, there are a number of figures along the wall. The wall has um, is wide enough in its center area for four horses to ride abreast. Mm -hmm. And then beside that on either side are crenellations with occasional um, pieces that jut out for siege equipment and or just a staging zone and then one central one for a massive massive horn um, nothing could living could possibly have created that horn it's too big for that unless that is a, that is all it is it's just a giant living horn or I don't know whatever but no no creature you've ever heard of has a horn that big um, and that obviously was the one you guys heard when you you first came to the city. Uh, the wall is fairly well guarded right now. Um, you can see it packed with infantry all along, uh, most of them with ranged weapons. And then the uh, siege equipment is manned. Mm. Everyone is looking north. Yeah. So no one really hears you guys approaching. You will also pick out on the wall um, Where's Sova, by the way? Uh, rejoined you. Okay, cool. When you guys were, she's aboard a ship. 
Or he, sorry. He is aboard ship. What does he say. remember? He died. Uh, no, no. Um, the, your second memory is, is when Sola caught up with you. Okay. Yeah, he was, he was hanging out in the mountains to the east. And uh, you told him you were coming by and he should meet you. Mm -hmm. Very confused about this thing. Mm -hmm. Very confused about it. I'm um, sitting with him, kind of keeping him calm. Also, uh, a couple guys nearly fell off the boat when uh, Sova suddenly on board ship because he made no sound approaching. Mm -hmm. He made even less sound than this. Um, yeah, one other thing. This is important uh, also. Uh, the, while the people are surprised by its presence, mm -hmm. they don't seem surprised by its existence. You get uh, at least a couple of them seem to know of this type of thing, at least. Mm. Whether or not they've seen it, they've heard of it. I would ask them what they know. <laughs> I don't know shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know shit. Um, All I know is so knows. They'll, they'll tell you that they've heard legend of a um, very narrow mountain to the southeast. Well, mostly east from where you are. Um, called Metagalpa, mm -hmm. and that they've heard that there are bird riders that live there. Look at so like, whoa. And, uh, like, so it's like, kind of gives you this image of a giant mountain, mm -hmm. and now you kind of like recognize that's an image that Sova has given you a couple times, mm -hmm. but it's it's very foggy, mm -hmm. and uh, Sova doesn't Distant remember. Memory. Yeah, it's a very distant memory from when Sova was barely old enough to remember anything. Mm. It's it's old. It's Sova's oldest memory. We'll go visit sometime. Kind of brushes up against you. Yeah. Well. But anyway, um, also on the wall, uh, a person the size of a siege weapon. You do see. Um, uh, Siku speaking with a man there, trying to, uh, like he seems to be gesturing wildly and like pointing north, pointing that way, like seems to be trying to figure out where something went. Um, he has a group of soldiers um, at his, behind him, lined up as if they're following him somewhere. Not not like not lined escorting. Up as, not escorting. Not like, <laughs> like they're 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 trying. No, to, not this time, <laughs> damn it. They're not. It doesn't look like they're trying to escort him. It looks like they're following him. Yeah. Looks like our little boy made some friends. Also, those guys um, have their weapons out and almost look like they're ready to start Attack fighting. The guys, good, good, good. Okay. Um. Peace is preferable to war so, here. Uh, or well, yeah. What are what are your what are your directions? Um, I assume the captain is nearby us. Mm. Well, you can be nearby the captain as well. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be like, yeah. See that lot right there? That's kind of burned out. That's where I'm gonna build the tower <laughs> for you guys to park the ship. I also have another potential up. North. That would be preferable. It will be difficult to get a fully loaded ship over this wall. The, uh, have to go all the way around to the east like we just did. It's be unfortunate. But if we could get something north of the wall, that will definitely make it easier. Although, if we can make agreements, getting south of the wall would be quite convenient. Quite a big, a, uh. Doing the Macarena over there? <laughs> Do I still have his book? No. <laughs> stole something from me. <laughs> no. Serves you right. Right. He unstole it from you. Um, That's not also, the he's not on board ship, and you can't remember what his name, what what he looks like. Well, let's see. No, you you two can remember what he looks like, because he did spend the XP for that. Otherwise. No one, uh, like no one on board ship, remembers him. Yeah, well, I'm not talking about him. Um, um, also, also, Jules doesn't remember him. <laughs> he can't remember why we, you guys went to the east and and came over the ship. It's convenient and all, but 
Why didn't we go north? Um, yeah, if Siku's on the wall, we should head toward that, toward the wall then. All right. Um, Siku, you went to the palace to talk to, uh, um, Constantine. Constantine. Um, and he wasn't up at the palace because he was already up on the wall. Uh, it took some talking to finally get you up there to talk to him. Um, but you managed to convince them. Um, and yeah, because if they didn't let me, I was going to go anyway. <laughs> exactly. But that, that was the kind of feeling. And so a couple of that the, wasn't really an issue. <laughs> a couple of the palace guards finally decided that it was better to just take you to him and have him explain things. And so they they took you up there. Um, it was difficult getting on top of the wall. You had to go. Basically, they couldn't take you the normal ways. They had to take you the ways they would take horses. Because you don't fit any of the other ways. Um, so you went up through the palace and then out onto the wall from there. Okay. Because there is a spot where they can get the horses, uh, horses onto the wall. All the way at the Just far east. Just in case they need to ride a horse on the Western. wall. Yep. Well, you never know. Runners. Runners. But they got you up there. You had to walk all the way to the middle of the wall to get to him. And also, you were, if, they, if, someone breached, if someone got to the top of the wall... A nice cavalry charge down the, yeah, the top. Yeah, that's there. true. <laughs> you were just in the process of trying to explain what happened. Now, where is Otto? And he's saying he doesn't know. And you're saying, tell, what, did he go north? Did he go east? Did he go east? At which point, like, you both hear a chop 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 kind of sound. And then both turn up and see approaching from the south an airship. And then you also Project hear from the south, from the south, and you also hear a like from the north. And you look up to the north, and there is a long um, serpentine shape that has wings, um, doing this sort of like flying thing through the air as something between an eastern and a western dragon Never approaches the wall. Ending story. <laughs> it's not a dog. <laughs> No, it's a luck dragon. <laughs> a luck dragon. Um, Jesus, get your 80s childhood correct. <laughs> it doesn't have dog-like features. Um, no, this is a um, sort of like an eastern dragon in, in shape, um, but it seems to have had the addition of some sort of wings attached to it, and it, it glows with an internal blue light that seems to seep through the scales, and there is a woman riding on its back. Okay. Question. Oh, fuck. Does the airship look like the ones that attacked the village when I had my awakening? Yes and no. Well, shit, we're they... getting attacked by both sides. <laughs> <laughs> both of them have to come down. Reaches over, grabs somebody, tries to decide which way to throw them. <laughs> look, then... look, I can do more damage if it's a person than if it was a cannonball, okay? I'm just saying. I'll be heading toward the bow as we approach the wall. Yeah, okay. I'm going to get on top deck, jump on sofa, and I'm going to ride down to... Yeah, because I area. would... Whichever one was closer, I would throw something at it. <laughs> um, yeah, you see you see Otto walking to the bow of the airship. And I can tell it's him? Yeah. From that... Okay. My outfit's pretty distinctive. It is. And then there's also a bird thing. Yeah, of. and you can see... Uh, Mores on uh, Sova. Sova riding forward as well. On the other side, it's a woman who is dressed in a red outfit. It's like uh, you can see the red. Do I cloth recognize screen. her? Um, you recognize this creature. You've seen it from a distance. You've never seen it this close before. But no, you've never seen her before. Okay. Well, okay, here's the thing. You know you've never seen her before, but something does seem familiar about her. She has been described to us. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, how close is the serpentine thing? Um, a ways away, but it's approaching pretty rapidly. It's not like, it doesn't seem to be charging, because it's actually slowing down as it approaches. 
but uh, it does let out at a good distance this wall shaking roar. Um, strangely enough, you don't see its like mouth move when it gives off that roar. It's so just it's farted. You don't see any gases coming out the rear end either, but sure. How often do you see gases when you fart? <laughs> How often do you glow blue from the inside? Tuesdays? <laughs> Tuesdays. Depends on when the last time I had a Nuka-Cola Quantum was. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, don't have that one. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse you. I'm all Good. smiles. <laughs> Captain Jack. Yep. Uh, yeah, Constantin is like... What? Um, and you can see with his arms crossed and giving a glance of disapproval all around, um, right beside him is, uh, or on the other side is uh, Boltzmann. 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 General Boltzmann. He's just radiating general disapproval at everything. Oh, he well, he's a general jackass. <laughs> yeah, I don't like him much. Can I throw him in the train? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you want to try? I mean, cause we'll Maybe to, when he gets closer. We'll have to roll initiative at that point. <laughs> when he about. gets within range. The dragon or the person? The dragon. Okay. In range of the person. <laughs> You know, I can't throw people indefinitely. Um, they land at some point. <laughs> you can get there ahead of time, but you're going to have to, like, basically do something heroic to get over onto the wall if you want to be talking with people before she gets there. Harold Flynn, that shit. You know, swing off on the river again. I offer a ride with Sova. Sova could carry both of you. Yeah, Sova's gotten pretty big. Yeah. Like He's his big. his wingspan. I'd rather right. <laughs> the, the <winner>. <laughs> but <laughs> all right, fine. Uh, he could like he's like, I mean, technically he could probably could. You're but still are you with sure? Those assholes. <laughs> are you sure you want to be electrocuted? Yeah. Okay. Or, um. Lightning fight. I was really hoping for a chance to rest before this happened. <laughs> You're not down that much essence, yeah, right? No. Or no, you should be fine in essence. And you've healed. I was going to say, have we? Ne negative zero boxes. We no. healed. Um, okay. For how many hours? It's or none? Here, here's the weird thing. <laughs> technically it's none? It's technically not yet to the time that you are standing out in front of watching the attack. Okay. But at the same time, you guys, you two, Tim and Mora, or uh, Otto and Amores, you've had... Um, Something on the order of like six to eight hours. How much time has passed for me? Um, this is this is basically you went from okay. that right. battle the, the last or two episodes ago, and you went up to the palace, and then from the palace. Right. Up on the How road. long did that take me? Um, the arguing. Maybe the, two hours. Two hours. So that's how much. Uh, Ten essence and two boxes. Yeah. Well, you didn't take any damage during that fight, did you? No. So you should be at full health. Yeah. No. It's my essence that... And another thing I found out is during combat, you actually get five essence per round. And it's ten essence per hour outside of combat. Huh. So every turn, no, as soon as you start your turn, five essence. Or five modes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they, they are encouraging you to just spend it like crazy during combat. Hmm. Well, that... It was a lot more convenient. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it helps to actually play in somebody else's game sometime. sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> and so I, I, I actually have played a game of Exalted with a different GM since uh, our last session. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm just going to have to catch a ride on him because Fiari, I am not. <laughs> Fiari? <laughs> he's, he's, he's not going to do very good riding on ropes or swinging nope. on ropes. Nope. All right. Okay. Yeah, you guys right over there. Um, looking through my mask, what's the big dragon thing and lady on? The oh, whole gosh. Um, so you see a lot of 
energy coming from inside of that creature. Mm -hmm. The surface of it is kind of black, though. Okay. So you see, like, anywhere there's cracks, you just see light shining from inside coming out. But mm -hmm. it's all, it in itself is, is pretty black. Um, the woman herself... Uh, is sort of like looking at a negative. Mm. So she glows with a like bluish mm. um, translucence mm -hmm. with uh, your mask. Mm. Um, honestly, it looks like a black light to, to give you the, a better description. Mm -hmm. But she looks like a she looks like a black light. Well, this ain't encouraging. So we got a magic power source in a shell and a negative opposite of everyone else lady who probably is one who made it. Brilliant. All right, I move, uh, bring Sova and the line on top of the wall. Or at least over to the wall and that auto get off. Yeah. Um. I'll have to sit down, uh, so we'll have to sit down for at least a moment for Otto to get off. Yeah. Because again, he's not Viari. Yeah. So he's not going to just do a cartwheel off of Sova's head and land on the wall. Nope. Well, I was kind of thinking that I was riding on Sova's back and Sova was carrying him. Yeah, that's, oh, okay. that's what I was thinking too. Okay. Yeah. So then it would just be uh, just float just... over and put him down. Yeah. Touch and go. And then what are you going to do, Tim, Morris? I'll get off and, um... Mm -hmm. Uh, wait here. Okay. How close is it now? If, uh, if anybody gets too close to you, go ahead and, um, and you guys, take off. You guys have enough time to have a, a quick conversation before the creature gets here. Yeah, like, what's its distance? Uh, we'll say a long range right now. Well, no, just it's it's just okay. one band beyond that, so it's extreme. Okay. Um, I'll wait by so. I'll approach Constantin and uh, Boltzmann. And I'm right there with them. Yep. Uh, sort of in between them, actually, the way they've been standing. I trust these men are clear. Are you looking at, you. at my men? Yeah, like no. that's where you're from. No, okay. the men on the wall. What do you mean, cleared? I'll look at Morris. Do I see any spooky ooky? Oh, hey, well, what do you know? Every single thing here is either green or orange. Huh? Every single every single thing up here, except the guys with him, and these two guys, uh, Boltzmann and. Um, uh, it's Constantine. Every single other thing up here. Um, How did they react to the green thing I brought them? <laughs> they were that. That was like they were. Like, I don't know what that is. Basically, like I've they no crawled out of one of your guards. Seems like like they were giving you kind of the like. That sounds ridiculous. When we showed up. Yeah. Uh, yeah no. Um. Uh, all of them. All of them what? <laughs> yeah, what's that thing in your hand? What, 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 are you, what are you holding? I'm assuming it's got a similar light. It's probably oh. dead by now. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So he, he seems to be holding some kind of, like, dead radish or something, root creature. I don't, I don't know. It's some, some kind of root. It crawled out of one of the guards last night. And, yeah, it, it doesn't, it it doesn't have a face. It doesn't have teeth. It doesn't have them. a mouth. It, it looks like a, like a radish or something. Does it have arms and legs? Nope. Okay. okay. It, once it died, it kind of shriveled up and changed. Which was it part was of why green. they're, part of why they're green. having a hard time un, like believing yeah. anything you said. Uh, we're gonna tell them your I'll forces have been infiltrated, wall. and all of these men are the enemy. Now, I know. Where the sacrifices went, I do not know who took them. 
and they look at each other like kind of what a man named malachi in the city to the north underground had the sacrifices somebody brought them to the gates no one knows who but they've given them shelter oh that's this doesn't preclude my theory that it was either the yozi or the fey who orchestrated the break of the treaty but I do know how they broke it. And they kind of look at each other like, fantastic time to bring us this information as <laughs> the creature like kind of comes in and stops like right before the wall. <clears throat> like up or down? Like straight, like pretty much on level, but a little bit above you guys and right okay. in front. I was literally going to throw somebody at them once they were within medium range. That's why I kept asking. Okay. That's, 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 they're coming to medium range. She is, she is right now. Okay. Who's directly next to me? This guy. Constantin Boltzmann. And this um, guy. Oh, no, 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 no. no. He's, he's a little bit back. And your guys. Are You're a pissed bit back. at me right now. I, I know better. I'm you giving. Could, I'm still but, giving you your distance to tell you. Regular tell soldiers okay. are giving you a little bit of distance. Like you guys are separated from the regular soldiers right now. I did say that all of their their troops are compromised, though. Yeah. So you could move over, grab somebody. Yep. I move. I grab one of the guys they said was compromised, and I hurl them. <laughs> oh! Right. Oh! Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> I thought these guys don't show emotion. So wouldn't it just be... Uh. <laughs> no, there's got to be a Wilhelm scream, even if it is. <laughs> ah! It just has to happen. Um, we'll do this as a surprise, because no one... Uh, despite your pro productivity towards it, uh, no one really expects this to happen. <laughs> Five successes on the grapple. Oh, yeah. I just rolled. We, the... we got to do the grapple first. Okay. Hold on. Let me re-roll. Because that's a different dice pool. Strength brawl plus grapple specialty. Or is it dex brawl? Just uses evade because he's not going to parry this. Is it strength brawl or dex brawl? Dex brawl. Oh wait, no, it's uh, okay. So what he does is he he's he's just needs to make two successes. Um, it's a gambit. And so is he rolling strength brawl or dex brawl? Yeah, I think it is rolling dex to him. You make a decisive attack against your opponent. If it fails, you lose initiative in order and order succeeds. You roll initiative. Run inflicting health track, however, as well as trying to match the gambit's difficulty rating. Um, yeah, so, just, uh, for this one, just go ahead and make a, um, dexterity ball. Just so I know. Six. Okay, yeah. Um, you got him. And then, uh, make the, uh, ranged attack. Uh, so how many rounds of control do I have? Oh, now, to do the... Rounds of control, it's a strength brawl versus their strength brawl. So it's a contested roll. Rolling again. Yep. Let's see how many rounds of control he gets. I should have just skipped to this step. I only got two successes. Uh, that is also what he got. So just the one? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've re rolled too many times. Wait, no. Uh, this is an opposed strength plus brawl or martial arts roll between the grappler and target. Should the target win or tie, then the target escapes the grapple on their next turn. So they're actually getting away from you. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> I never would have expected you to only get two successes on that. Me neither. Roll. But it happens. So yeah, you grab onto the grab onto the guy and, and then I go turn, to like I turn to to do that and, and he's just his okay. his like um what you had a hold of kind of rip the cloth rips off. And you go fling basically fling a rag <laughs> forward is all that ends up going. This guy's like what are you doing? And everyone on the, the guy wall kind grab of grabs says that? Yeah. I will I look yell it out as loud as I can to the woman on the dragon. I was really expecting to have to compare defenses here. Um, I look at him and I say, uh, we need an envoy. And then I go <laughs> grab him again. <laughs> Um, okay, if, if we're going to do that, I'm going to have to join battle. join battle, unfortunately. Everybody roll? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do join battle, and that'll decide who, who's doing what when. Um, I'll have a 10. I'm basically using everybody who's looking at is looking at you and the dragon as a distraction so that I can hide. You can't see. Should I have rule twenty for this so I can keep track of who's who a little better? Join battle is wit plus dexterity. No, it's yeah. um, wits, uh, wit, wits, wits awareness. plus awareness. Yeah, that's plus right. three successes. bad for telling what numbers on it, but it does certainly have to function. Mm. What'd you get, Dan? Uh, nine. Okay. Good eye. Scott? I have a ten. Okay. And what color did you want? I'll take the dark green one. Yep. And my uh, army has a three. <laughs> I'll use light green to show that they're with you. Well, I was going to say, don't they go on his turn? No. Oh. Yeah, uh, do tens count as two? Yes. Okay, then I got twelve. Okay, and of the remaining? I will take the blue. So you're at, what was again? Sorry. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. So, uh, Siku seems intent on uh, grabbing this guy and throwing him. Mm hmm. Um, Everyone, uh, well, for the the person arriving, the lady arriving on the, this monster seems to be uh, w up here to talk, um, mm -hmm. and is in the process of pulling out a uh, white piece of piece of cloth. Um, I am so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. I'm tackling the guy out of his way. <laughs> again, <laughs> it happened again. For being so sorry, you don't sound very sorry. I'm not. I really, I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tim. Um, so you're gonna basically make a decisive attack with your uh, against this guy. Is the way this works. Okay. So my this is uh, so that's um, going to be it's, what? It's your dex plus your um, brawl. Okay. And that's, that's it. it. That's it. You don't add any weapon or anything. So basically, what I'm going to have to do, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to like go. Uh, Did you do your stealth start to this? Yeah. Okay. Oh, what was your successes on your stealth? Was that? It, it, nine? it was my joint battle. It was so, so nine. Okay. 
So yeah, what if you get a, even a su single success, you've hidden. Okay, um, but to stunt this up, I'm basically going to have uh, like g run, jump, and have Sova like flap his wings t and kick me to send me like hurling forward towards this guy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like a bow or an arrow out of a bow. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can get your stunt dice for that. It would suck if we both went off the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. For them. I don't think I would have Two, a problem with it. Four, five, <laughs> seven. seven. Okay, so those are all net hits, but yeah, that, that makes the gambit. Now you guys do a contested strength plus brawl. Wait. Oh, uh, we So do that was to succeed at the gambit. Okay. Now you find out how many rounds you gotta keep it for. Strength plus brawl? Yep. Okay. And then I get my net successes? Okay. Um. Don't think about that, but probably. Okay. So, all seven? <laughs> uh, no. It doesn't say anything about adding your net, net hits to it. Yeah, no. It's just strictly strength brawl. Yep. And specialties. All right. Because you're just seeing who's got the upper hand. Yeah, your dice pool just dropped. Okay. Um, well, basically, the like <laughs> being flung through the air, tag, like gr grabbing this guy like around the neck, okay. and then wrapping my legs around him and pulling him down, like um, like wrap around him so I'm behind him, and pull him to the ground. Okay. <laughs> And then tighten my arms around his neck. Sure. You can, yes. Cool. Two. Well, he got zero. So you got him for two rounds. But either way, you, both of you go flying just out of uh, Siku's reach, rolling past him. That's all I really wanted. That's completely fine. <laughs> okay. This green was... Me? You. Alright. I'm gonna use Vicious Lunge to grab this guy. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> grab Morris? Yes, it's just a grapple. Okay. It's a grapple check. Yeah. And uh, I get automatic one success and I get plus an additional plus three initiative if I hit. Okay. So, your strength in that in brawl versus my strength in brawl plus my specialty in athletics. <laughs> <laughs> or in, uh, fuck I, don't, I don't even care. I'm not going to stunt this. Okay. <laughs> Two? Three? Okay, so, yep. And I'm going to forfeit that additional round reflexively with my crashing wave throw and throw him into the dragon rider. <laughs> okay. Giving me plus two damage. Yeah. So, um, basically. I mean, this is like the fourth or fifth person I've tackled out of your way. Or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You're not even going to let me explain this time. Or try to. Now, do I roll a throw? Because technically this is just... Yeah. Okay. Five. Okay, a couple of things are going to trigger here. Um, let me see if I can find... Because this right. becomes a decisive attack. Yeah, you're actually missing her. But okay. But I'm he still is flying through the air. And this is where I go. Sova! Um, to, you're doing a decisive attack with the throw? Yeah. Oh, yeah. With him. Okay. Um, he's not going to impact anything this turn. So we'll worry about that when it comes to it. Okay. Um, just remember, because I'm at 
14 now, one for the successful grab. Actually, go ahead and roll three. that, and we'll decide that that's how far he's being thrown. Okay, so that's going to be... Because this is going to reset my initiative. Yeah. It's going to be 14 and then plus 2. All right. Let's see how far I go. Seven. Jeez. Okay. Se- seven range bands? <laughs> Not seven range. Well, I mean, with the, the how far it goes down, the wall does at this point. He's gonna be falling for a long time. But he's he's. Yeah. Unless Silva goes and picks him up. Yes. No, Silva's gonna come pick me up. But Silva's gonna have to make some athletics checks to catch up. I have a little doubt he'll be able to do it. So, um, this woman up here. Uh, like pulls into a defensive stance, um, showing that she is only defending herself, not attacking, uh, but willing to defend herself. Um, and as they go sailing by, hey, Otto wants to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> However, she is also activating another charm that is going to go against your resolve. Who's resolve? Yours, since you're the one making this attack. So manipulation plus presence. My resolve is three. Oh yeah, you're gonna be fine. It's better than my dial. Oh, she won, yeah. Nice. I'm honest. Someone's gotta be in this group. You wear your heart on the screen, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really? She fails! It looks like she's failing it right now. Um, she's too surprised. Too flabbergasted. You just threw one of your own allies. As far as I'm she's not sure concerned. I already activated that. I've got to roll three more dice. But yes, so, sort of. Hey, get three more dice because I failed. <laughs> no, she has a charm similar to ours. Get to three to every. Yep. Okay, she got four. So she she beat it by one. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I wasn't believing that it was happening, so I was looking to see if I forgot anything. I haven't played this character yet before. Um, but yeah, she got four, uh, and is going to give you a minor tie to her. Um, the minor tie is that uh, she is worth listening to. to talk to you. How, how does she, like, she just, like, thinks it, and it, all of a sudden I want to listen it, it's, to it's her? Just, it's just her, like, the, her... The combination of body language. Yes. And body language, her facial expression, um, all of it is just saying uh, that why, why would you start a fight? And also, by the way, everyone, well, not that they don't already know, but yes, you started this fight. Um, you're the aggressor here. Um, when aren't I the aggressor? <laughs> yes. But she's unarmed. Um, she's riding a freaking dragon. And she came here to I parlay. think that hardly counts as unarmed. <laughs> yes. And, and strangely, like, on the one hand, that argument seems seems fair. But, uh, like, though she seems to be just through I'm unarmed. Position manipulating everyone into seeing you as a mean aggressor that isn't willing to talk and her as the reasonable person. The, that's basically the activation of this term does that. Yeah, that's like saying I'm unarmed when there's a person or a building within arm's length of me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Alright, uh, so that was you. Um, is this auto? Yep. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> I'm having too much. Are you here to defend the wall? Who are you talking to? Her? To defend the wall. And she kind of looks at you. Ah. Otto. Or sorry, no, she says, Ah, the Marshal of Peace. It's a pleasure to meet you again. I'd heard 
you made a visit while I was away. Yes. I'm here to keep... And she kind of looks to the right. Things from falling into the wrong hands. And then looks back towards... Uh, the, like, soldiers and generals and, you know, basically the army on the wall. She's, uh, oh yeah, to give her a better description, she has so black she hair. looked toward the palace? She looks towards the palace and then looks back. Certain things, wrong hands. Soldiers are the wrong hands. She has long black hair, flowing black hair, um, looks very, like, that healthy kind of sheen to it. Um, beautiful red lips, uh... Her outfit is, seems to be a single um, bolt of cloth that's just wound around her, and it's uh, blood red, like very, very bright red. Um, she's not wearing any shoes or anything, her sort of feet are bare. Um, and, uh, I'm getting a very Frank Miller Electra vibe. To some extent, yeah. Um, <laughs> But Electra, I don't think, paints her lips red, or does that. Would you? I heard you, she's usually paint with black or darker lipstick. Anyway, yeah. um... Uh, and of course, she doesn't have any size. Yeah. The mistress does good work. I'll indicate her dragon. And she kind of like pats it on the head. Yes, she did restore to me a good friend. That's scary. Actually, instead of good friend, an old friend. That's um. even scarier. <laughs> But I think that's probably enough for one, one action here. Drop you down. Um, As part of that, can I make that my stunt to instill in her? Okay. Uh, what were you trying to instill? I mean, I would I would accept it perfectly fine as a like read other kind of yeah, action. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Read intentions. Read intentions. So that's uh, perception socialize. Yeah, perception socialize. And yeah, you can get two dice stunt for that. So what are you trying to look for? Um, really, whose who's side she's on. Um, because I don't... <laughs> You'd have to define the sides before you can ask yeah. whose side she's on. If she's on the side of the living, let's say that. Okay. If she's on my side. If she's on your side. <laughs> We are on no one's side. Um, I, like, no I get that she's no probably side. against the people in the, whoever's in the palace. And it may be that it's the infiltrator that's in the palace that she's against. So that that doesn't bother me too much. Uh, what I'm more concerned with is, is does she want to bring the wall down? And is she on the side of the Fey, the Yozi? Okay. I thought she was the Yozi. No. no. Those are... Yeah. So, okay, Fey no, and Yozi are two different things. Yeah, I yeah. know. So, Fey, Fe, the wild, Yozi are the sort of demon princes. I mean, the only other thing she could be is... Uh, the that is a lot of successes. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so I kind of, you kind of had a whole bunch of things out there. Um, on the one hand... She is most certainly not on the, the side of the Fae. At all. Um, as far as the city, like the people there, um, they don't seem to yeah, they don't seem to be coming into her calculations whatsoever. Okay. As far as the people on the wall here, um, she kinda seems to be thinking that all of you are enemies until proven otherwise. Would give her that idea. So, <laughs> exactly. Um, she doesn't seem to have any particular argument with you. 
I was just delivering an envoy. It's just that you seem to be the only one here willing to talk at the moment. Okay. All right. Um, Boltzmann. He threw someone, and the person on the dragon is talking to this guy over here. No, um, he uh, basically blusters a bit as he's like, You have no right to parley with our peoples. You come here as an attacking arm, and you try to discuss things civilly. No, I say be gone with you, and let your armies be ground in dust at our walls. He's going to try to intimidate you. Yeah. Backfire. Uh, yeah, he only got two. She just like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the I'm actually in agreement with him for once. <laughs> <laughs> Um, then, uh, yeah, Constantine. Constantine. I know his name. I do. I swear. I swear. Constantinople. I know. I know. No, I, 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 I made the name. It. I purposely made the name the way I made it. Doesn't mean that it doesn't just slip my mind every second that I'm trying to think of it. Like, ten seconds before, I know it. Right when I want to say it, it's gone. Um, Constantine. kind of, like, puts a calming hand towards uh, Boltzmann and says, Let's hear her out. Perhaps we can discover what it is she actually wants and make a deal. After all, we're all friends here. And he kind of looks at you specifically. And he's going to try to mollify uh, Boltzmann. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you guys aren't the only ones that have to, uh, you know, <laughs> deal with your uh, allies. Oh, there's a five, five. Yeah, Boltzmann. <laughs> you can see, like, mustache, like, twig twitches with that, but he seems to calm down a bit. In the meantime... Um, her turn. I haven't properly introduced myself. My name is Battle Drenched Passion. And I am here to prevent a most powerful weapon from being used improperly against this world. What they have not yet revealed to you is that this weapon can be applied in any direction to destroy everything that exists there. And a weapon originally intended to destroy an army could also be used kill the population behind it. You have been misled. And she's going to try to instill in you guys a, a willingness to cooperate. Sort of, or rather, that she's a reasonable party. Is what she's going for. I mean, she's already got one on you. But yeah, I you, know. For you, I she's mean, going for that one. Technically, she's tied to the Mistress of Plate and Bone, and I already have one for her. Yep. But I'm not there right now, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, um, what is your... Uh, your resolve, Dan? Uh, six to being persuaded. Well, what, what is it base? Four. Four, okay. That's specific because I figured out that appearance applies against your the resolve, not against the other person's appearance. Because not everybody's vain. You can be ugly and still have the resolve to not be affected by beautiful people. Or, you know, just average looking and not be affected by beautiful slash very ugly people. Um, so I, I've been doing that wrong before. So she does get a plus one because her appearance is above your resolve. Okay. Uh, I guess not too bad. One, two, three, four, five. So six. 
against your uh, six. Yeah, so that ties in, which is a success, just barely, but it is a success. So she's going to basically put a tie to you, or you're going to have a tie to her that um, she's the reasonable person in this, or she she is a reasonable person. So everybody gets this? No, this is to him specifically, to Otto. Okay. She's got to start small and then go from there. All right. And then the last person, oh yeah, your army. You haven't given them orders yet? Um, no, they're just going to be on guard. They're not going to yeah. do anything. They're gonna they're gonna let the the big people talk for now and then decide what happens if it actually comes down to there being other people involved in the fight. I mean, if it, like the soldiers on the wall start fighting, they'll be involved. Okay. Go back to the top. Um, I believe that's Morez. Mm-hmm. Ah! So hard. Me. Oh, this is you. Yeah, he was twelve. He lost it because he. Oh the yeah, gambit. yeah. Sorry, you went all the way down to the bottom, Tim. Oh. So this is. Um, auto. We're effectively in social combat. Yay! Um. She so got one decisive thing on you, you got one on her. Alright. We're going to activate uh, Harmonious Presence with personal notes. Okay. So you say there's a weapon here that could be used to destroy cities or whole armies, and you don't want it to fall into the wrong hands. This is good. I can agree that that is a laudable goal, especially if peace is the goal to be maintained. And I'm going to attempt to instill in her uh, a portion of my defining intimacy, which is peace is preferable to war. Okay. Um, does she have any bonuses to her resolve? Um, manipulation of presence. Is this cutting a deal? Um, not yet. Not yet? Okay. And then, uh, plus three. Eight. Uh, that definitely beats her resolve. And peace is preferable to war. Unfortunately, she's going to uh, spend a willpower uh, to activate one of her intimacies to resist that. Because it is anathema to her way of doing things. She's had to expend uh, willpower resources. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright. Um, so. Her and the two guys are happening at the same time here. Um, so this is all taking place in like, what? Four, four seconds? seconds? Five yeah, this hasn't taken too long. Oh good, I've only been falling for five seconds. <laughs> yeah, thereabouts. <laughs> no, they're having tea and sitting down and talking while I'm falling my death. You're basically the, the spy kids at this point. Um, yeah, I think, I think they're... Did you learn your lesson, at least? They're calm down, and they're, they're going to let the conversation occur, so they're not going to stop you. by stopping you. Um, so no. Are you showing, well, are you showing signs that you're, you're not done throwing things yet? It's not my turn yet. They'll have to wait and see what I do. Alright, um... I mean, I'm not even sure how it works, because evidently I have to want to listen to her, even though that goes against everything of my character. Okay. Because she got one role, right. now I have to believe that you, I want to listen to her. You can spend a willpower to stop that. 
then I sorry, will. Sorry. Like, oh, that's, that's not like a thing. It's not a, not a permanent. You can you can spend a a, temp, a current point of willpower and use one of your intimacies to resist any kind of mental influence. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, it's yeah, it's a magical get that, that like because it's like okay, I just have to make a roll, and then you have to believe whatever, no matter what other story elements have led up to right, this right. point. But, um, I'm sorry about that, but yes, yes, you can you can actually anytime. Uh, supernatural mental influence is occurring to you, you can spend a willpower to resist it if you have an intimacy that you can say is against that. And that will negate it permanently? Or yeah, that'll, that'll, that? that'll, that'll remove that effect from you and you'll be immune to it for the rest of the, this scene. So we'll have to find a different argument to bring that in. Yeah, because like she's been, we've seen her over every attack, you know, over several attacks. The this dragon we've seen her. No. The dragon I've seen, yeah. This, this, the, 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 the dragon, the only time you've seen it before, this specific dragon, is um, at the um, the undead city that you guys were at. Right. Which and then is the enemy. Moving the, moving the army here. And so, so there's thus far, thus far she is not... Okay, this, but that dragon that she's riding was over the undead city. I yeah. equate that with the enemy... Okay. Who's been attacking the people, and it goes against protecting. So that, that you could go for, yes. So I'm going to do that, Okay. and I'll spend the free willpower for my cult. Okay. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I just don't like that, you know. Yeah, I understand. Because no sorry, story element leads to me wanting to, feeling yeah. like I should listen to her. We haven't we haven't had a, a too much of this effect yet. Most of the people you've been dealing with have been okay to just talk with him or Ben normal folks. Yeah. There hasn't been very many people you've talked to who have had the ability to supernaturally inflict effects before. So yes, you can any, anytime somebody is doing supernatural mental influence, if you have willpower available, you can spend that say, hey, this intimacy counters it and, and prevent it from happening. Alright. Um, where was I at? Oh yeah, it was these guys. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Do they want to stop you from throw, like starting the fight right now, and also being thrown? They're they're uh, they're going to command the soldiers to move to, uh, away, clear the space. So their soldiers start backing up, and they'll like back they'll back a range band out of your guys' uh, space. Hmm. So they're still following orders. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, she is going to. Uh, she is going to say. Look, the only reason I brought these armies here is to stop an army that has already infiltrated the city and intends to use this weapon. I can take you to it right now. I'd be happier with it in your hands than in theirs. And we can put this whole thing behind us. I'm just going to try to convince... She, she will... Okay. She's basically trying to make... She's trying to make a deal here. She will not attack the cities. The city. If... I take possession of the weapon? Exactly. Okay. So this is going to be sort of, I guess, against you and also... I'm trying to talk to Constantine. Okay, I think she will spend some essence on it. Navarro? Mm -hmm. Three. I will spend three peripheral notes. Activate impassionate discourse to get plus four dice. So, what are you rolling here? Sorry. Uh, manipulation plus presence. Cutting deals. Oh, you're you're trying to get in on the deal as well, or like you're trying it's to. My hands that is coming in. Okay. 
What's that? It's my hands that the weapon's coming into. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, you're supporting I'm this. The, I want the weapon. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna go agree with this. Because if yes. I get that weapon, I can defend the city from the Fey and the Yozi. Yeah. Yeah. Six. Uh, so yeah, six. Um. Yeah, you support her argument. Um, and do a, a pretty good job of supporting, but she's actually, her argument is, is as strong, if not stronger, than yours. And you see, like, Constantin and Boltzmann kind of share a look and then look back, share a look, look back. And, uh, we need to talk to, um, Classius. I not to do. No. <laughs> It's, All right. We have to get his. Fine. We ha he has to be the one that agrees to this. I whisper to you, he's not going to agree. We're going to have to kill him. At which point you hear a voice saying, Agree to what? Yep, fuck this guy. And that's where we're going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in free fall here! Come on! Yeah, should we at least finish the run? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's so much better having him. Because <laughs> this is totally Dukes of Hazard. How are the Duke boys going to get rid of this? <laughs> yeah, I I'm just going to show up at the last second while you guys are like getting ready to fight this guy. And suddenly I'm just going to be right behind him and cut his head off hey, or something. Hey, this way you'll be able to do stealth to join battle because you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, catch y'all next time. <laughs>